Manchester United against Liverpool. Look, it was wild. Yeah. It was epic. Maybe it took something wild and crazy and outside the box to, to stop Liverpool. Whatever it was, I think we can definitely say two things. Liverpool, uh, United's players did not give up on Eric Ten Hag. Nope. And Eric Ten Hag, can we get him a little bit yeah. of love to keep that group together, to hang in there for so long against Liverpool? Yeah, sometimes under pressure against the domination of Liverpool because that second half really Liverpool were in control. And I'm not sure how many people within that stadium or like us watching on television thought there was a way... There was a scenario where United could actually win that game because it looked like Liverpool were 2-1 up and really in control, creating chance after chance. But yeah, credit to United and Ten Hag. They never gave up. They kept believing. They kept putting a shift in, even if it was difficult, even if they didn't have much of the ball. And in the end, they got their rewards because, yeah, Liverpool made mistakes and Liverpool obviously physically went down, especially during extra time. But United, I just love the energy that they had. I love the fact that the fans kept believing, were still behind them, and they found a way. And even if you take advantage of mistakes from the opposition, that's part of the game. And that's what United did on their, on their third and fourth goal, and well done to them. So, mistakes on the opposition. Mistakes, you know, ga these games will turn ragged. And we'll break down further how ragged this game actually got. Mm. But United had a chance to win it in the 90th minute, which I find absolutely wild was like the last kick of the game yeah. Rashford I don't think it was a great finish from him I think he was probably shocked to be so open yeah but then it's almost like a carbon copy of when they did score their winner with a counter attack which was finalized by, by my man Ahmad Diallo mm. where again it's off a corner kick and then one missed tackle or one little giveaway from from yeah, Elliot yeah, and they go and right up the other end I it's rare to see that twice in one game in those you know, when the team's been so good. Yeah, I mean, the first one is, is like... They, 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 is it just that Liverpool are gambling to win the game? No, not the f no, the first one wasn't because that was an attack from United. It's a great ball over the top for Rashford, but in the box. The second one is a counter-attack. I think if Elio and Endo maybe communicate a little bit more, maybe they are a little bit tired and jaded and they don't make that mistake, it doesn't go 2v1 with poor Conor Bradley, who, by the way, slips or like, like stumbled before Ahmad Jalo takes the shot. So the first one is a great play by United. The second one is really good counter-attacking, but the mistake from Endo and and um, and Elliot really is bad, as bad as the Darwin Nunez one, because there's no way Darwin Nunez should play the ball like he does that leads to the Rashford goal and the ball from McTominay. So Liverpool sh shot themselves in the foot as well. They missed their chances. They hit the post. Uh, even if they were a lucky on some of their goals, they were in control, and they also can have themselves to blame for it. But well done to United for keep believing again. And Ten Hag put Bruno Fernandes centre-back and Anthony a left-back or left-wing-back, if you want, to try to go for it in the end. And he got rewarded. To be fair, whether you lose with another goal or you come back into the game, Mel is trying. So well done for him for trying. It's funny when you make that point, whether you lose another goal or... I was. I thought back to the Man City Newcastle uh, game the 24 hours earlier. Yeah, and it was like Eddie Howe instead thinking like, "Ooh, it's better if I just lose two nil than yeah, you know, exactly. whatever." That, that's no, but it's, it's very true. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Um, we've talked a lot about how this is Jurgen Klopp's kind of farewell tour, leaving the club in, uh, in 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 June. But he he obviously like nobody likes losing in that way when no. you played well. Um, we all saw that exchange with a Scandinavian um, reporter. Uh, and I say Scandinavian because that's all I'm told. I don't know if a dude's... Yeah, speaking. I don't know from which one... Yeah, you, know, but... you know it's all really the same. Right? You know, they all just <laughs> pretend to speak different languages just to confuse the rest of us, just to get more votes. <laughs> Sorry, the Scandinavian Sorry. people. Um, but I mean, I was not... You know, you see Klopp get testy sometimes, but is this an indication of a state of mind? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's... Be it's not the first time that we see one of his reactions like that when there's a question he doesn't like or it's a bad question. I mean, this question was, I think it was clumsy the way it was asked because the guy talked about intensity and the club was like, hang on, we've played a million games in three days. We've got half a team injured. Don't talk to me about intensity and stuff. So I understand clubs that he didn't like the question. If the question had been turned differently on like, you've played a lot now with right. only half your squad available, did your players get tired? Something like that, it would have been a very different answer. The fact to say to him like, well, where was your intensity today? That yeah. was not the way of asking. <laughs>